Have you ever wanted to pick up an item in a game? Perhaps store it in some place for later? Fret no more, the inventory is here. Only your mental aptitude is needed. An inventory is some way to keep track of all the items you have collected in your game. Want to make a survival game with lots of resources? How about an RPG with lots of different weapons? Or maybe you're th making a story game and need a way to store a key card to open a door. In this video, I'm going to be going over variables and how to make an inventory using them. Please be aware that this is a bit more of a how to make video rather than a direct tutorial on anything specific because an inventory can take any shape, size, or form of your choosing. First off, what is a variable? A variable is a gadget under the logic and processing section of your gadgets menu. It stores a number globally, which means throughout the entire scene it's in, and it allows you to modify, reset, or get the value that's stored within the variable with a variable modifier. The properties of a variable are fairly simple, with a minimum and maximum value, as well as a default value. There are some other buttons here too, but the one we are focused on for this video is Persistent Dream. This lets you save your inventory in your dream. So, when other players leave your dream, they can come back later and have everything saved. Now, how do we use this wonderful gadget, you may ask? Well, it has something to do with what I said earlier, a variable modifier. A variable modifier is a separate gadget that has some simple settings here that allow you to set, get, add, or reset a variable's value. There is also two modes for this for everything but the get function. These two modes are when powered on and while powered on. While powered on will constantly apply the function you choose and when powered on will only do it one time per powered. In most cases, you will probably only want to apply the function once per powered on. This way you don't add too many things to your inventory on accident. Now that we understand our tools, how do we use it to make an inventory? Well, let's start with the simplest way. To begin, we are going to want to come up with a list of most or all of the items you can have in your game, or your player may pick up along their journey. It's good to do this now, as there is one large caveat to variables. Variables will lose their save data if not in every scene in your dream. So, to prevent this, we need to have the same identical variables in every scene for your game. The easiest way to manage this is to make a new element, that is, a single microchip. You can organize this microchip any way you please, but this is where we will put every variable in our game. If you ever need to add a new item, take one away, or add any other new variables, you can just edit this element. Then, go into update mode, and the scenes in your dream to apply the changes. This way, we don't lose any items throughout our game. I like to call this element a motherboard, as it's kind of like the heart of your game, like a computer's motherboard. You can use this microchip for global logic that's needed in every scene too. Now that we have a list of items we want the player to have, go ahead and set up your variables. I'd recommend setting them to a max limit of a million if they are a item that you pick up a bunch, or just one if it's something that you need to unlock something like a door. And of course a minimum of zero. And you also need to name your variables or else they won't function properly as we need the name in the variable modifiers to actually apply the changes to the value in the variable. Returning to our scene that we need an inventory in, we're going to need to have some way to access it. This is what variable modifiers are for. Since we are doing the simplest need for this first, let's make a pickup that is required to continue throughout the game. If you don't have a variable for this, you can select your motherboard and in the lower right corner, click on the edit element button. This will take you to the element's edit mode and allow you to make changes, save, and then go back to the previous scene. In my scene, I'm going to make a key, and that is required to unlock a door. First, I get my sculpt, then place a microchip on it. In order to pick this up, I just want the player to walk over it, 
so we can use a trigger zone to detect the player. Then, to add the key to the inventory, we need a variable modifier. And since I only want this to be picked up once, we need a destroyer and another variable modifier. For the first modifier, go ahead and set it to set, and the value in the slider to 1. Set the mode to 1, and in the text field, put in the name of the item. In this case, if you want the door to work properly, the name of the item should be I underscore key with a capital K. And this is the name of the variable too that you need to place. For the second modifier, set it to get, and then put in the name of the item. Now connect the trigger zone to the first modifier's power, then plug the output of the second modifier to the power of the destroyer. This pickup is now complete. It also automatically removes itself if you have already picked this key up, as it detects the variable state, and if it's active, then it activates the destroyer on the pickup. This is the most simple form of an inventory. However, you can't really do much with the key except use it to unlock the door at the moment, which is also done with variable modifiers and other logic. Now, how about we add an inventory screen? This way we can manage or use our items. I don't want to go too in depth in this video, so I may glaze over some details. If you get confused, don't be afraid to ask for help or check out some of my other videos. Let's do a really simple form of inventory screen. We're going to make one that is like the bag in Detective Pig. First off, go ahead and set up a room in your scene that is basically just looking into whatever you want your inventory screen to be. Whether this be an open bag, a briefcase, or something other than that, it doesn't really matter, the concept is the same. Once you have the room set up, go ahead and group everything that is part of the room, including any items that you need in your inventory screen. We don't really want to see this during normal gameplay, so I'd probably either hide the room under the map, or use a keyframe to turn it on or off depending on if it's open. Now for opening the inventory, I'm going to use a signal manipulator with its edge mode set to toggle it on. That's in the custom remapper mode. To get an on-off state, we are going to use a keyframe to turn off our puppet interface as well as any other logic on our puppet that may need to be turned off. For example, some attacks or any other thing that takes in our input. This way, while the inventory is open, our player can't move around or do any actions. I'm also going to use this to keyframe on the Imp Allowed While Possessed button in the controller sensor, as we're going to be using our Imp to manage our inventory. Now on our inventory screen, I'm going to add a microchip with a camera on it. So when we turn on our screen, we will be looking at it instead of the character. In order for us to actually interact with anything in our inventory, first we need to put our items in it if you haven't already. Make sure these are part of the group or else they won't turn off when the screen is closed. For every item in your inventory, you want to hook up a variable modifier that turns them on. You can keyframe this or hook up the modifiers to the power port directly. I recommend using keyframes because it's cleaner. These variable modifiers are set to get. If you have any of the item, it will send a signal to turn the items on in your inventory. Since we are using our imp to manage our inventory, our main tool here will be the grab sensor. We also want to make sure that our models for our items under the physical properties tab have the imp interaction setting of grab. If we don't do this, we won't be able to grab or select the item. If your item is in multiple parts or models, then make sure the part that you want to grab has this property, or all of the sculpts in the group. Go ahead and place a microchip on one of the items in your inventory, then place a grab sensor on the microchip. Depending on what your item does, is what the grab sensor should do. For example, if you want to equip the item, you can use a keyframe to send a signal to your equipment manager. There could be many things your item could do, but it's really codependent on other things in your game. That's all you really need to know on how to make an inventory. However, due to the sake of showing of an example, I will show you how to equip one of your items. In my case, we're going to be making my character hold an umbrella. In this system, we are going to be using an exclusive gate. 
If you haven't used them before, they can be pretty scary, or at least intimidating. They work kind of like wireless transmitters, as in what they are named plays a huge role in how they function. Same with variables. An exclusive gate allows only one gate to be open at the same time. That is, if they share its name. Once you open a gate, they usually close automatically, unless you set it to manual mode. In manual mode, they are required to be closed with a signal. Or if a different gate is powered with the interrupt button toggled, it closes that previously open gate as well. Exclusive gates are basically a larger selector and can be expanded very easily. If you only have 10 items or less that you can equip, you can use a selector instead, but exclusive gates allow for more control as well as more than 10 options. It also helps organize logic a little bit. To get started, I'm going to place an exclusive gate and name it P1 underscore hand. This way you can have more than one player and designating this as the hand slot for the inventory allows for different inventory slots to be made. I'm going to set the mode of this gate to manual. Turn interrupt on and then use the gate open output to power a keyframe. I'm setting it this way so it will stay open giving us a constant powered signal and the interrupt allows other items to automatically close the gate without adding any extra logic to close gates. This keyframe is what actually equips the item. I'm going to place umbrella in the character's hand by grouping it. However, I'm going to have it powered off by default. Using the keyframe, I'm going to power it on, and this equips it. To open the gate, I'm going to use the switch, and then use the inventory screen's items grab sensor to keyframe it on. This pretty much covers it, but if you want to unequip the item, then use another exclusive gate that has nothing connected to it other than a new switch. Have a new switch on the inventory item that is powered on with the equipped item keyframe, then use AND gates to switch to a different keyframe to power on the empty exclusive gate, therefore unequipping the item. You will probably also have to use a signal manipulator to make the grab signal a pulse rather than a constantly powered on output, otherwise it may constantly flip between being equipped and unequipped. The one thing here is that an inventory can be expanded heavily. For example, there are many different type of inventory screens that you can use. In fact, I have a separate tutorial for a grid-based inventory screen that you can use in conjunction with this tutorial. I'm also planning on expanding this tutorial with different types. I asked on Twitter what you guys wanted, and there was an overwhelming support for all kinds of inventories. This video is a basic to intermediate video meant to help everyone design a basic inventory for the game, including a peek at equipping items and how to use items. I plan on putting out at least two follow-up videos to this one that are more advanced. These would be for a survival game with inventory items that you can eat, as well as stat changes for attacks and such other things for an RPG style inventory. However, this video should teach you the basics and allow you to at least make what was shown, if not more. I want to thank you all for watching, especially with the growing subscriber count recently due to the Dreams release. Um, I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.